Okay, greetings everyone, this is First Centurion 753 with a new series on uh, Geopolitical Simulator 4. This series is going to be restoring the Ottoman Empire, or reviving the Ottoman Empire. I think restoring the Ottoman Empire is what we're going to go with. Um, and in order to do that, we are playing as Turkey. Turkey is a government, uh, Republican government. It has a parliamentary regime, conservative rightist. 81 million people, capital is Ankara, uh, 300,000 square miles, 8 regions, temperate Mediterranean climate, GDP of almost $800 billion, uh, which gives us almost 1% of the world's uh, total GDP. Uh, growth rate is at 5.2, which is pretty good. Unemployment, yuck, horrible number, 10.5. Uh, inflation is actually kind of high at 7.7. .7. Uh, yada yada yada. What else we got? Capital GDP per capita. Uh, I like to get out that over ten thousand pretty quickly if possible. Three hundred thousand men in the army. No nuclear weapons. Elections in five hundred twenty-four days. Okay. Political party-wise, looks like we have four political parties here. Central Alternatives Party looks to be the furthest, furthest left wing. Liberal Social Democratic Party uh, is probably the rival, the biggest rival for our. Uh, pioneering Muslim party. Let me just click on these just to show you. Does it give you makeup? It doesn't give you the breakdown. Okay. Um, but the conservative rightist party is, um, it doesn't tell you, huh? I guess we'll have to click on the, uh, we'll have to click into on it when we get into the game. Uh, and then there's the ultra conservative coalition. We're going to be the pioneering Muslim party here. Um, Muslim rulership uh, has sort of dominated uh, Turkey in the uh, uh, last decade or two. Uh, the Ottoman Empire was was Islamic, uh, however, it was pretty well. At least uh, Constantinople, or Istanbul, is what it became called, um, was definitely more of a uh, cosmo cosmopolitan um, society, while Muslims did uh, um, retain you know, privileges. Uh, there were, I believe, uh, Christian communities, Jewish communities, and uh, as sort of like a central trade hub in uh, the Eastern Mediterranean, connecting the Mediterranean and the Aegean Sea to the Black Sea, uh, Istanbul has always been generally a pretty cosmopolitan city, um, allowing multiple different cultures and diversity. Let's check out the uh, news. I wonder if these are all the same in 2018. This is the 2018 add-on we're playing with, obviously. To end the year on a high note, our head of state has decided to return to, and I quote, the roots of our traditional culture by going to a charming little village in the countryside. After donning the ceremonial costume made up of baggy trousers, sequin trico, and belled hat, he participated in a dance performance wearing clogs, and at dawn in a small serenade of guttural barks, customary of the region's shepherdesses. This was followed by a New Year's Eve meal consisting entirely of local fare, in particular the mysterious clog, a cake whose recipe is known only to the village sorceress. <laughs> the chief of state called it an incredible evening, which I will always remember. Obviously, he was glad to get back to his helicopter and anxious to return to the capital and watch the fireworks. The members of the Lumberjacks Chorus wished him a Happy New Year in song. Okay, that can't be a universal introduction. I don't think. Uh, if anyone knows, um, I don't know, I don't remember what the uh, introduction was for my last series, which was on India, but... That does not sound like Village Sorceress and Lumberjack stuff. I, I can't believe that that's a universal intro. Can't see that happening for the United States intro. Um, anyways, uh, so uh, this game was uh, voted on, I think, back in February uh, on my channel by subscribers. Uh, the goal here is... Um, it's, I think it's going to be pretty much a conquest game for the most part. Uh, restoring the Ottoman Empire means... Uh, retaking most of the Middle East. Saudi Arabia was not part of the Ottoman Empire, although the Ottoman Empire, I think, did extend down into the Red Sea. Um, it also extended, I believe, into Persia. I gotta double check that. So that might mean Iran. It did definitely extend into uh, the Balkans at its furthest. It reached all the way to uh, 
the gates of Vienna. I don't know if we'll actually get that far. Um, but it also did extend into North Africa, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, I think even possibly Morocco. Um, so the Ottoman Empire was pretty vast. It was controlled all trade routes from uh, the east to the west. Uh, the Silk Road went through the Ottoman Empire. Um, and uh, it's the monopoly that the Ottomans had on that trade is the reason, I believe the reasons why the uh, Portuguese first began to start exploring um, down the coast of Africa looking for a southern route to Asia and that led to discovery of trade winds which gave Columbus his idea to sail across the ocean and that changed the world entirely. Um, so it's really because of the Ottomans that this all happened. Um, Ottoman Turks are ethnically different from Arabs, although they are religiously the same. Uh, mostly this is a Sunni Muslim population. Let's just go ahead and check the religion breakdown here. There probably are some Shiites, Shias or Shiites. Um, where is it? There it is. Okay, religious breakdown is 80% Sunni, Sunnites, Sunnites, Sunnis, and Shiites, 20%. I don't know what the correct pronunciation. I've heard both Shiites and Shias and Sunnis and Sunnites. So you weigh in on there down in the comments down below if anyone has any info. 66% uh, popularity for the Sunni leader, Sunni community. Uh, 64,000, 64 million. How many people do we have total? We got 80 million. Okay, so the Shiites, yeah, that about covers it. It's either they're Sunni or Shiites. Not a lot of atheists, I don't think, in this country. Uh, it's definitely a religious country. Um, as, as I was talking before, um, Ottoman Empire, from what I remember from graduate school, uh, Constantinople, Istanbul, the capital, uh, is generally seen as a cosmopolitan area. Look at that very big city there. Um, and uh, there were communities. I, I, was, I took a course on um, focused on Venice, uh, or a book that I read about Venice. So where was that book? Oh, I forgot exactly the name of it in my library back there, but I'm not going to look. Um, but it talks about different communities that existed and uh, different groups that had trade rights in it, uh, making Istanbul, while, you know, dominant by the Muslim culture and the Muslim religion, uh, it allowed for other cultures to exist within, I think, almost neighborhoods, kind of. Um, and traditionally, I think in uh, recent world history, or 20th century, late 20th century world history, um, Turkey was seen as more of a liberal Middle Eastern country. They were one of the only democracies in the Middle East, uh, other than uh, Israel. Uh, today, Iraq is considered to be a democracy. Uh, Iran does hold elections, but are they really democratic because the religious leaders are the ones who are nominating the leaders and certain parties are outlawed, so that doesn't really qualify as a democracy as far as uh, most in Western societies would agree. Um, but Turkey was seen as sort of like a liberal light in the Middle East. However, uh, recently there has been sort of a uh, authoritarian crackdown. President Erdogan has assumed more presidential powers, not saying that he is a dictator, at least not yet. Um, well, maybe he is, I don't know. You weigh in on that down in the comments. Feel free to weigh in on that down in the comments. I'm sure I'm gonna get some people from Turkey watching this. Um, you know, don't get yourself in trouble. Um, but um, it seems to be moving to a more authoritarian, almost less secular society. Um, the eastern provinces of uh, Turkey and Anatolia, the region of Anatolia here, have always been considered to be more conservative. And there seems to be, from what I've read and watched on YouTube videos, uh, there seems to be sort of a polarization within Turkish society with a uh, Western, more cosmopolitan, uh, economically elite, and then a more conservative, um, rural, uh, isolated area, while uh, the uh, Marmara, Marmara, Marmara region there uh, tends to be, is that the name of the region? Yeah, that's the name of the region. This tends to be more connected with the world through trade. The rest of Turkey tends to be much more isolated, much more conservative. Uh, Erdogan, uh, probably more of a conservative leader than they've had in the past, I guess. And again, more of an authoritarian, um, a conservative rightist there. Oh, let's take a look at those political parties, too. 
Wow, there's five. Okay, I didn't see the other one. I only saw political parties. Legislation. Political parties. Okay, uh, oh, this one, uh, independent movement. Has no seats in uh, Congress. Let's take a look at Congress, actually. That's a better way to look at it. Here we go. All right, Central Alternatives Party. This sounds like the most liberal socialist alternative alternative party here. They are very liberal. Let's see what we have here. Six, Eight point six sympathizers. I don't know how to control demographics in this game. Somebody asked me that question recently on the channel. Is there a way to like make people more religious or more politically oriented? And if anyone knows, feel feel free to post that down in the comments. Uh, we've got the political uh, <clears throat> LSDP party, Liberal Social Democratic Party, um, the Muslim Pioneering Party, let's see, how many seats do they control? They control about 25% of parliament, 134 seats, not very popular, uh, our leader here is much more popular, 69%, uh, 40 million sympathizers, big investment budget, they don't tell you what the investment budget is there. And then there's the ultra conservative coalition, 10 million, 12% population, 40 seats. That is the political breakdown. There will be an election. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get around, be able to get around this election or not, or have time to get around this election. It's uh, June 6, 2019. Usually, I like to try to avoid the elections. I, I like to try to become an authoritarian. I hate I hate elections in this game. Um, <clears throat> I never know how things are turning out. Um, so I do like to try to make a authoritarian system if I can, and Erdogan would be, I guess, a good model for that for, for my approach. So I am probably going to be trying to, oh, change term limits. We want it to be unlimited. Not yet, not yet. We have some moves I have to do first. Uh, length of head of state to term, five years, and we're going to want to like double that at least. So. We'll uh, make some modifications to the Constitution eventually. Uh, probably going to try to make this more of a conservative uh, society in general uh, in the Middle East. We are going to... It's going to be a conquest game, I guess. Conquest slash domination game. Um, so I guess I'm going to want to move into the Middle East and uh, focusing on religious issues and making it a strong, socially conservative society should be... should make it easier for me to incorporate these uh, Islamic fundamentalist countries, I don't know if they're all fundamentalists, Iraq probably more liberal than fundamentalists uh, at this point. Um, <clears throat> Conflict-wise, we are dealing with uh, the Jihadist Caliphate in Syria, and I almost want to go ahead and just conquer Syria myself. We'll see what we can do there. There are, I guess we have some proxy groups. There are Kurds in Syria as well as Kurds in Iraq, and we probably have Kurdish uh, terrorist groups in uh, southeastern Anatolia there that we're going to have to deal with. Cyprus is going to be one we're going to try to dominate immediately. I think a war with Cyprus would be an easy, quick victory. You could probably do that with even without a uh, UN mandate, but we'll try to get the UN mandate anyways. Uh, Egypt looks to be a strong rival, so, so is the government of Syria. Saudi Arabia, again, I don't know if I'm even going to invade Saudi Arabia. Um, Turkey is part of NATO at the moment, so an invasion of other NATO countries doesn't seem to be a priority yet. I think uh, gain grasp over the Middle East um, and uh, become a uh, dominant Islamic power by force uh, that might lead to uh, that might be the first approach. Uh, there was a book too that I read recently called "The Next Hundred Hundred Years." A forecast of the 21st Century by George Friedman. I'm going to go ahead and recommend that book down below through Amazon Affiliates. If you want to help support the channel, you can uh, click on the link in the description and uh, buy that book there. It won't cost you any additional money. It'll just be a couple extra bucks for the channel. Um, but he has some interesting predictions about the next 100 years and about Turkey in the next 100 years uh, where he talks about how Turkey is uh, going to be sort of like a rising power. And uh, he predicts that by the 2020s, Turkey will be um, a top 10 GDP country. Uh, population is 19. Let's see where we are at GDP in the economy here. We are 18. So a nice goal for this game would be to become to fulfill that prediction. 
and become a top 10 GDP country, I think. Uh, so I guess it's probably going to be a goal, that and restoring the Ottoman Empire. Um, uh, he also predicts that a buffer zone uh, needs to be created between Turkey and Russia, because uh, Turkey, Russia will be trying to prevent Turkey's expansion, and uh, Mr. Friedman here predicts that uh, Georgia will be annexed by Russia and attempt to regain uh, connection with Armenia, which is a Russian ally. Uh, so we may actually move in on Armenia. There is the unfortunate story of the Armenian genocide. A lot of people deny that. I don't want to get into that whole argument there, but there is definitely tensions between uh, Turkey and Armenia. Um, so according to George Friedman, by 2020, Turkey will have emerged as one of the top 10 economies of the world. Uh, I'm reading straight out of the book here. Turkey enjoys one of the strongest geo geographic locations in the Euro, your Asian, of any Euro Asian country. Um, and this uh, strategic choke point here uh, between the Aegean, Mediterranean, and Black Sea uh, would control Russia's uh, access to the world trade. However, you can't really blockade in this game, which is one thing that I wish you could do. Uh, some of the geopolitical, some crucial geopolitical concepts. Uh, are, you know, unfortunately not available, or options are unfortunately not available in this game. One of them, another one is uh, Turkey's control over these two rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers here, um, and that would give Turkey, that gives Turkey a big geopolitical leverage uh, over water access to the Middle East, but I don't think we can, we can, we can really control that too much in this game, unfortunately. Um, furthermore, in uh, Friedman's book, uh, let's see, he talks about uh, to the south, there is a permanent instability, a lack of economic development in the Arab world. Uh, so that's something that we're going to have to work out, especially with the uh, increasingly uh, declining reserve of oil, supply of oil in this world. Um, to the northwest, there's perpetual chaos in the Balkan Peninsula. We see that still here uh, in the former Yugoslavia, uh, Serbia, Kosovo, Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, it doesn't seem to be too much tension here in the game, but uh, generally that, that is an area of political tension. Um, Friedman does predict a uh, conflict between Russia and the United States by the end of the, uh, or by the beginning of the 2020s. Uh, not likely to happen now with uh, Trump, the Trump administration, but if, um, well, you never know what can happen. Um, and uh, the argument is that Russia will continue to further destabilize the uh, Middle East and territory to the south of Turkey uh, in this conflict. Uh, it looks pretty <laughs> unstable right now. Um, he, Friedman continues to argue that Russians will work to contain Turkey uh, through Arab countries to the south. You mentioned that. Uh, he, sa he suggests that the Islamic world is incapable of uniting voluntarily. However, uh, capable of being dominated by a Muslim power, and that I think is going to be the approach uh, in this game. Turkey dominating the Muslim world, uh, maybe uniting the Muslim world even further. Um, the Muslim world does extend from the western coast of Africa all the way to Indonesia, so there could be a further extension of uh, possible uh, Turkish or Ottoman uh, resurrection here of their empire. Um, Friedman argues that Turks will be instrumental in America's anti-Russian strategy. I'm not sure. We don't have good relations with Russia in the game, but uh, I'm not looking for a war with Russia in particular, so I do want to stay out of that conflict in general. Um, what else does he say? It's, it's a very interesting book. Again, like I, I want to say, I recommend uh, reading that book if anyone's interested in geopolitics. Uh, it's an easy read. Uh, it is a New York Times bestseller. Uh, it's about uh, 250 pages. Uh, something I read last uh, last spring, which was a very interesting read for me. So uh, he predicts that Turks will rise as uh, one of the global powers or new emerging powers in the world. Uh, he does predict fragmentation of Russia and China while Japan, Turkey, and Poland all seem to uh, rise, according to Friedman. Um, 
so that's something we're definitely going to take a look at. All right, it's been about 20 minutes here. I'm going to go about a half an hour in this episode. We haven't really started playing at all yet, and I'm going to kick it off with some of my typical starting maneuvers. We're going to look at uh, health care insurance here. And healthcare reforms, this is an easy way to make a quick buck and not lose too much political power. If you just reduce these two, they tend to be some of the most areas and, um, or the most funded areas. Um, and that's like $3.5 billion. That'll take a big hit, but it, it'll take a big hit, you'll take a big hit popularity-wise. But if, uh, if you do this, you do have the funds to, inc to fully fund... Uh, a lot of uh, special interest areas, which you can then use these special interest groups to in endorse you and bring your popularity back. So fighting orphan diseases, fighting genetic diseases, fighting against cancer, there's a whole uh, association lobbying group for that. There's a whole association lobbying group for fighting against AIDS, vaccinations. I got guys that have seen my videos before, you know these are some of my initial moves, so apologize if it's redundant. This is more for uh, the new audience. Hopefully there is a new audience uh, coming to the channel. I do seem to be growing in subscribers uh, every week. Uh, funding is not really growing that much, which is why I haven't really been making uh, a lot of videos. And school has started. That's really the big reason. Summer's over. Um, but it really, the YouTube channel is not really making a ton of money. I do thank all my Patreon supporters for staying with me, and that's why I'm going to continue to make videos, especially videos of your request. Uh, the Great War series, uh, Making History of the Great War, will continue for sure on this channel. And as you notice, look at this, there's a very little amount for all these areas that are getting fully funded. Modernization of equipment, that might be a lot. No, that's not a lot. Hygiene and establishment, that's not even that much. Uh, but one, I think somewhere in here, yeah, that's a lot. We're not going to do that one. Um, coverage for work accidents is also a huge amount. Uh, so I'm actually going to do something a little riskier with this episode. And just cut that down. Uh, I thought I was going to get more out of that. Oh, that's not the one I want. We're going to cut this one, yeah. Wait a minute. We're doing all four of those. All right, that's risky. This is a lot to take uh, to take away, and we're going to probably be losing a lot of popularity for this. But uh, I'm going to use endorsements, and I think tax reform I can pass, which will help regain it. And this is a 5.2 billion dollar uh, increase in the budget with all these areas getting fully funded. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. And I didn't show you the, uh, I, I did take a look at this game before. Um, I don't know if that already had changed. But yeah, budget deficit. Uh, budget deficit was at 8, uh, there it is, 8.48 billion dollars. Uh, with a public debt of 226 billion. So we cut the deficit by uh, almost 75% there with that. Uh, country at risk as far Your as debt. Your elevated financial solvency risk requires us to warn financial players about it. Yeah, yeah, we're going to fix that. Uh, ICT factors, information communication technology. I think we're going to work on that too. Let me go ahead and run this uh, video here to see what the impact is of our health reforms. Uh, we're going to take a, we're probably going to take a loss, but... Um, it's going to greatly reduce budget deficit. Let's go ahead and fast forward this to the next day. File of suspect terrorists. We're going to have to deal with the terrorists in this game. This is the next version. This is uh, 6.38 or whatever. All right, so uh, let's take it. We took a 7.6% hit there because of health. But old folks, women's rights, handicapped, fight against AIDS, fight against cancer, uh, and public finance all seem to be in favor. The oldest person in the world, I think or the country, doing a good job. who usually has a lot and of influence. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to get her endorsement. Uh, looks like it'll be pretty easy. And there's a boost from the Human Sharing Solidarity Foundation. Let's go ahead and get their endorsement. We're going to get this one a little bit later just to spread out the endorsements a little bit. Hopefully that will have a better impact, a better effect. Um, all right, so that's 7.6% uh, off there. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and get the tax reform done again. This is another typical move on my part. Um, opening move for me, raise the company turnover tax, that's $5.9 billion in revenue it's going to bring in, 
and we'll call it new reform, new reform, we'll call it tax reform, tax reform one. Fire that off, create the reform, and if you take a look at it, not very popular, 86% against. However, uh, we're going to appease both sides by doing throwing uh, two little nuggets in there. Look at this company. Company tax is really high, 20%. We want to really cut that down, actually, because that affects employment. That's probably one of the reasons why employment is so high. We'll take off 1%. We'll add that here. And uh, that's 1.3 billion into the bill so we're down to 4.6 I think billion uh, that would appease the right-wing parties as you see they're now not as much opposed now to appease the left we're gonna go ahead and get employee social security payments cut them they're pretty high too uh, we might be able to do a lot of work with this actually that's a uh, 600 million dollars add that to the tax reform we're still gonna get at least 3 billion in revenue Add that. Uh, not completely there yet. There's a little bit, and a lot of the times, just to put things over the edge. Uh, one thing that no one really objects to, especially not in a religious country, uh, pornography tax. Here we go, one percent of that. It's not a lot of revenue, but it usually is pretty popular and is able to get you over the edge on some of these forms. And now we're at fifty-three percent, so that will work. And we are now looking much better. We're in much better position. All right, we gained 4.3% purchasing power, employment, industries down a bit, social, family are up. And she thinks we're doing a good job. Here's the meeting. All right, give her coffee. Sure. Tell her she's charming. Yes. You can't give her alcohol, which I think is better. In the old I... version, you could give her alcohol. Probably not a good thing to give a 101-year-old lady alcohol here. That's really good. How old is she exactly? 108. Oh, my God. All right, uh, let's get her to... Okay. Uh, if it makes endorses you happy. publicly and take out a party card. Okay. Sure. I don't know if she'll last if for the election, but hopefully, maybe she will. Um, and that would be that. So that endorsement should give us a nice boost. Hopefully, get us back over fifty percent. I'm thinking, likely. Another compliment: space research. Citizens are becoming more and more interested in conquest of space. We should create a national space agency. I don't have space. Ah, there's endorsement. 8.2% from that uh, elderly lady's endorsement. So that's pretty good. Uh, we're back at 55%, and when that law passes, I'm sure we'll get into the upper 60s. Uh, we have a while before that happens, I think, still. Parliament. Law in progress, that's on the 12th, and I spent most of this time talking about Turkey and the politics of Turkey, so... So we didn't get very far in this episode, but in future episodes we'll definitely get further. Uh, election is on June 9th. I hate elections in this game. I'd said that already. Um, but we'll see what we can do with that. Okay. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Um, I did want to mention a few things about the channel in general. Uh, like I said, school has started again for me. And I'm teaching a new AP class, AP U.S. Government and Policy, which is taking up a lot of time. As well as teaching another AP class, AP U.S. History. No AP European history this year, unfortunately. And three other classes that I have to deal with. Lots of paperwork, lots of grades, lots of lesson planning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everything that's involved. And I can't cut. I can't cut my coughing. Um, I guess there is a mute button here. I probably could do that next time. Sorry about that. Anyways. Um, yeah, the channel has been making tons of money in revenue. I thought it was going to increase more this summer. I am getting more subscribers, which thank you for subscribing. Uh, and I still have some Patreons out there that are funding the channel, and I thank you very much. I greatly appreciate your support, and because of the Patreon support, I am going to continue to try to make at least weekly videos, maybe two videos a week if I get lucky, um, but things are pretty busy now. Um, of course, more Patreon support will probably lead me to create more videos or make an effort to create more videos, so just throwing that out there, you can... Uh, Click the link in the description below if you want to support me on Patreon. There's also uh, going to be a link to Amazon's affiliate uh, with the book that I'm uh, recommending for this series. Uh, the Next 100 Years, A Forecast of the 21st Century by George Friedman. New York Times bestseller. Excellent book. Great read for those people who are interested in geopolitics. Uh, I assume if you're interested in this game, you are. So I'm going to recommend that. And if you buy through the link, uh, it should provide me with a little bit extra more funding to help support the channel again. Um, 
But thanks to all the supporters from the patrons and the subscribers. Uh, I'll put a link to the Discord down below. That has not been very active lately. I think there's been some comments about that. I'll try to get a little more active on that. But again, with school starting, things are very, very busy. Uh, summers will be the best time for me to make YouTube videos. And uh, eh, over Christmas break and stuff like that. Anyways, um, but we're going to, this is a new series. We'll be doing this. Uh, at least uh, one or two videos a week from uh, from this series, expect that, as well as continuing with the uh, Making History of the Great War. Um, and I am open to other suggestions for video for games for this channel, of course, I'm not going to be able to come in as much time. Uh, I was thinking about maybe an alternative history approach, maybe just doing like an AI version. Uh, I've seen like these AI games out there where we just sort of watch how history will turn out with like different scenarios. I'm thinking like uh, Hearts of Iron 4 would be good for that. But uh, well, if that comes out and if you guys like it, uh, you know, be on the look for that. And if you guys like it, please do let me know in the comments as well as leave a like. As well as for this video, let me know if you're interested in seeing the series. Um, comments are always welcome. Like the video if you did. And you know, as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't and you'd like to see more. So that'll be it for now. Thanks, f and, and, and let me know what you think as far as goals for this series too. Pretty much a conquest series, domination series, like I've said. Uh, we're gonna try to take over the Middle East, North Africa, possibly move into Southeastern Europe if we're lucky, and I think maybe a drive towards the Caucasus may be necessary. Azerbaijan looks like an ally, and we may end up in uh, conflict with Iran too. We're definitely gonna need to uh, expand our military too. I don't think our military is anywhere near as strong as it needs to be. Security wise, that's not what we're looking for. Security? Military power index. We're eighth. Oh, I guess we're pretty strong. Stronger than I ran. Anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.